our first goal is to be finding the log likelihood. So we need to find the log likelihood with respect to mu. So we're going to write that like this. The log likelihood with respect to mu. That is going to be the sum. So as we're dealing with the log, we only need the sum. We don't need the product. So i equals 1 to n, which is all of the data ranges of the log of this thing, f of x given mu. So that is the log of f of x. We also need to put in the subscript i here because it's for all of the data given mu. OK, so that equals the sum of all of these. So I'm going to put that in there for now. So we get n i equals 1 and then the log of this thing. So we need to take the logarithm of that. So I'm going to write that down as 1 over sigma square root of 2 pi. You'll sometimes see this as square root of 2 pi and sigma after, but I like to see the sigma in front. And then that's exponential. You could write e to the power of something, but this is quite a lot to write in there. So I'll just write x for exponential. And then minus 1 half x minus mu, and that's xi because that's the data, all over standard deviation squared, and that's also a big bracket. Okay, so let's take the log of this. So we end up with, so we need to distribute the summation into all of the terms. So the log of this, which does not depend on mu, we can just write in n. So we get n log of now this is a reciprocal, so therefore we need to put a minus sign in front. And then we can just write this in the logarithm. That's just by the logarithm laws. So that's 2 pi. And then the log of the exponential, well they cancel out. Then we end up with minus 1 half xi minus mu over sigma squared. Now I'm just going to leave that in there for the moment. So I'm going to just write the summation next to this one. So that's i equals 1 to n. And that's a bit more accurate there now because we need this mu is dependent on the data. That's what we're looking for. So we need to put the summation term in there. OK, so now what we can do is we just need to just simplify this up a little bit. So we're going to write this now as minus n log sigma, standard deviation of course, square root of 2 pi, minus. Now what we can say is that the top and bottom will both be squared. So what we could do is we could take the brackets off that and write the top one squared and the bottom one squared. Now sigma squared, which would be the variance, that is not dependent on the mu, on the, on the mean. So we can bring that out of the summation. So then we end up with minus... 1 over 2 sigma squared and then we just multiply that by i equals 1 of to n of xi minus mu squared and that hasn't changed anything at all because we've got the sigma squared bring it out front and then we'll just leave this one at the top squared so that's our log likelihood of mu OK, so our next goal is to find the derivative of this. So now we're going to take the derivative of this with respect to mu. So now the log likelihood derivative with respect to mu. OK, n log sigma square root of 2 pi. There's no mu in there whatsoever. So this, as far as mu is concerned, is just a constant. So that will disappear. This one here, the minus one half times uh, what sorry minus minus one over two sigma squared, this is connected to this, and we're going to have to keep that for the moment. So that's just a constant at the moment. So that's one over two sigma squared. And then taking the derivative of this with respect to mu, we're going to have to bring the two multiplied by this out front. So using the chain rule. So now we're going to multiply that by two. Okay, so we've taken the two out of there, 
So all we're left with now is this summation. So now I'm going to write that in there. So n y equals one, and then we got the x i minus the mu. So that's what we got so far. Now we just need to tidy this up a little bit. Well, first of all, we can cancel out this one and this one. That's fine. We need to just clean this one up a little bit. So what we've got is from i equals one to n of the x i's. If we divide this by n, we've got the mean. So this would equal the mean. That's a simple formula for the mean. But this here is not the mean. This here is just the sum of the x i's. So we've basically changed the value by dividing everything by n. So if we multiply everything by n, so if we put an n here and an n here, we've not changed the value. So subsequently, if we're going to change that to x bar n, and then the sum of the x, so, sorry, from i equals 1 to n of all the mu's, we then need to put an n in for that. So therefore then this is equivalent to 1 over sigma squared multiplied by x bar n, that is taking care of that one, and then we now multiply this one and this one, so that's then sub subtracting n times mu. Okay, so now we need to set this to zero. So that's our next goal. So now let's let's just grow. Okay, so that's all rubbed off now. So now we've got this bit here now. So we've got derivative with respect to mu, one over sigma squared, x bar n minus, we'll just call it mu n. So we've got the ends at the outside of each bit. So that's that, that takes care of that. So we can just put this in a box now, keep it separate. So now what we need to do is set this to zero. So for one over sigma squared, x bar n minus mu n equals zero. Now that's going to equal if one of two things. This here becomes zero. Well, that's impossible. One over something can't be zero. So let's just write that over here. One over sigma squared can't be zero. Because sigma, sigma is always over zero. So that's impossible. So therefore, we're left with a situation where this has got to be zero. So x bar n minus mu n equals zero. Now that is only the case when x bar n equals mu of n. Now we've got n on both sides, so we cross that out and we can go x bar equals mu. So therefore we've got our maximum likelihood estimator for our mu, which is x bar. So therefore, we can just write that down here in a box. The maximum likelihood estimator for mu equals x bar. For this, we'll write a capital letter, because that's all of the data. So maximum likelihood estimate for mu equals x bar. Now we just so now we're going to take the second derivative of this just to verify that this is valid. So now what we need is Second root of the log likelihood with respect to mu. Let's just see if we can do this just uh, in our heads a little bit. We can factor out this n. So we've got n over sigma squared. And then we've got x bar minus mu. Well, x bar is a constant multiple. So that's not in, uh, involved in mu at all. So mu here will then just end up with a minus one. So that's what our second derivative will look like, which will also be minus n over sigma squared. Well, as n is always positive, so this bit is positive, and this bit, sigma squared, any square number, is also going to be positive. We're only going to be a minus of a positive over a positive, so this is always going to be less than zero. So therefore this is valid. So this is a valid MLE by the second derivative rule. Okay.